Hey everyone, my name is. Oh, for fuck's sake. Hey everyone, my name is Frontier Setter. Now, before you start watching this video, make sure to put on your Hella Cloud armor, because it's about to get real HK fanboy up in this bitch. I'm sure you all remember Pokemon evolutions. Well, here we have three of the HK evolutions, at least in the compact size, hammer fire, polymer frame variety. First up is the USPC. This is pretty much the classic Charmander Pokemon, the cute little Pokemon that you start out with, the one that's reliable, and the one that we all know and love. Next up is the P2000SK. This is the Charmeleon of the bunch, kind of the douchebag of the group, and kind of the one that we also want to just forget about so we can move on to the final evolution. And the P30SK, which is the Charizard of the bunch. This is the most modern and the final form of the lineup. So in this video, we're going to take a quick, close look at each one of these and see kind of how they all stack up. So yeah, the USPC. Uh, not much to say about this gun. It's pretty much just a chibi-sized version of the USP. And because you're already watching this, you already know of HK's supreme meme reliability. But out of the three, the USPC is the thickest. But also probably the easiest to shoot because of its size. Even though CSGO would have you believe that the P2000 is the thickest. Now, I've carried this particular USPC for quite a while now. I feel bad because, like, all my vlogs, like, they have some semblance of shooting in it, you know? I can just take a photo of my carrier. <laughs> it's just sitting on the toilet paper. And it's never given me any issues or malfunctions or anything like that. Um, but because this is only a sample size of one, uh, me telling you this is pretty much null. You just have to take my word for it. So why would you upgrade from a USP? It's a USP, why would you want anything else? Well, good fucking question. Well, the aggressive grip texturing on the gun is really abrasive on the skin. It's pretty much just low grit sandpaper, so because of the uncomfortness of it all, I didn't really want to carry it day in and day out. And this USP is version 1, so it's a double action, single action fire with a safety lever and a decocker on the side. I never used the safety lever at all, and having all these controls in a gun, I don't really like. And plus, the only gun that looks good with all these paddles is the Mark 23. I also wanted the LEM trigger, however, all I have here for tools is a Skeletool CX, a mini champ, and a stethoscope. So I know I wasn't going to be able to drop in that kit myself. Obviously, HK had to make some improvements to the premier line of pistols. So here comes the P2000, also known as the backwards bullet gun, as made famous by this little, uh, this little magazine HK put out here. The P2000 basically has the same internals as the USP. There are minor upgrades but I can't really tell you the specifics because I can't understand crowd space magic. But I do know it's complex and probably has way too many over-engineered parts. The ergonomics are also slightly better. The grip is a little bit more tapered and it has this one sole finger groove here that actually does help uh, keep the gun in your hand while firing and it actually feels pretty decent. However, the grip texturing is a lot smoother on the side. A lot of people don't like this and they say it's too slippery. However, to be honest, this makes a huge world of difference when you're carrying this day in and day out. You can also change the back strap on this as well, if you're into that kind of thing. This P2000 is in the V2 configuration. So when the P2000 series came out, they introduced that LEM trigger I was talking about earlier, which I'm not going to really get into what it is, because a lot of people can explain it better than I can, but pretty much what it does, it always cocks the hammer back, but you have like a really light pull on the first pull, and then you always have a nice crisp like single action hammer fire. But when the gun cycles, it's always that crisp reset and pull. Um, but you also have the benefits of having a hammer-fired pistol and the safety feature of, you know, being able to put your thumb on the hammer so you can holster it back in your holster. Um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, I like it. Most people think this gun is ugly. I like ugly things, I guess, so I like this gun, naturally. Also, this is my current concealed carry weapon. Nice little gun here. Who's that? Pokemon! It's 
Wait, so what happened to the P3000? Oh wait, there isn't one? Alright boss, this is the P30SK, the natural successor to the P2000SK. It has more modernized features such as being able to change out the backstrap as well as the palm swells. The ergonomics are further improved, the finger grooves are less pronounced, they just fit your fingers really well. I haven't really heard anybody complain about those grooves. Uh, everybody seems to like them just fine. The grip texturing is a lot more improved. If you zoom up close, they look like small little bananas. And the nice thing about this texture is it gives you really good grip without being abrasive on the skin. So you won't wear down your stomach or clothes or anything like that, which is a huge upgrade from the USP. And this P30SK is configured in the V1, which means it has a light LEM trigger. The internals of the P30SK are also fundamentally the same as the P2000. Not much has changed internally within those designs, which is a good thing because we all know how reliable the USP is. Now one of the improvements to the P30SK is within the slide release lever here. You don't have to completely remove the rod inside because it's semi-captive, which is pretty cool. So when you remove the slide, you don't have to worry about losing that pin. There's also a secondary firing pin safety inside the slide here, which adds to drop safety. Even though you should like never drop your gun. What are you, some kind of butterfinger? They also upgraded the pedal release. The mags are a lot easier to drop now because it's just easier to manipulate with your fingers. There's also front cocking serrations on the P30SK, which is pretty cool if you're gonna press checks. It's been my girlfriend's CCW for the past couple of years. We've never encountered any malfunctions and it's been, uh, it's been reliable. Good bullseye on that one. So here are all the evolutions side by side, up and down, and all around. It's interesting to note that the trigger guards are basically all the same. You can still see the design language from the USP, even the P30SK, especially in the slide here. The P2000SK and the P30SK have fully ambidextrous controls. The USP-C and P30SK definitely have larger third-party support, while no one really gives two shits about the P2000SK. And all these pistols can use the same magazines. Which is nice because I only own HK pistols which only use HK mags. The Picatinny rail on the P30 is definitely more accommodating than the P2000. However, I'd be hard pressed to find anything that fits the last rung on the P30SK. And the USB-C has this proprietary rail system that doesn't fit shit. You can get Meprolite True Dot sights on all these, which is pretty nice because it doesn't change the point of aim, point of impact on any of these sight pictures. It also gives you that nice tritium glow. The USP's recoil spring assembly has a nylon bushing, while the P2000SK and the P30SK have dual recoil springs. The P2000SK and the P30SK are pretty much identical in size. I think the P2000SK is like slightly smaller on paper, but when you hold them in your hand, you really can't tell a difference. And to be honest, the P30SK just feels thinner anyway just because of its, uh, its more refined grip. All in all, they are pretty much all the same internally, which is good because it brings that classic USP reliability all the way to the modern era. And they all have that really nice bobbed hammer so it doesn't get caught on any of your clothes when you're drawing from appendix or your hip. So here's the big question. Which one of these three should I buy? Well, the answer is none of them. You should just wait for the Mega Evolution to come out. No, but seriously, they're all great guns. The USPC gives you a nice full grip. The P2000 is a... Uh, uh, well, I like it, so... And the P30SK gives you all the modern amenities without any compromise. Now, I know you're probably all wondering where the VP9SK is. Well, striker-fired guns are another story entirely. And I don't have one yet, so that's just gonna have to wait anyways. But yeah, if you're interested in actually seeing a real review on any of these guns, let me know down in the comments below. So yeah, I guess that's it. Like the vids up to the channel. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below, and always remember to stay tactically kawaii. Um, go. There you go. Did you get it? Kinda. Oh!